Who am I? <laughs> um, I am Philip Picardi. I'm the chief content officer and founding editor of Them. Them is what we call a kind of community platform. So we didn't want to call it just like a publication. We certainly didn't want to call it a magazine. Um, we wanted to convey that it was for the community and obviously by the community and that anyone could participate in it uh, if they wanted to. When people talk about marginalized groups behind their backs, they usually say, oh, they do this or, or it's about them or, or whatever as a way to kind of vilify a community or lump people all in to kind of one monolith. And so we wanted to play uh, with that in a sort of provocative way. I really thought that if anything Condé Nast could do to really solidify its future, it would be to actually make a firm stance behind the communities um, that have helped to make it a successful company. And so what better thing to do than to stand behind the LGBTQ community to start? I'm a transgender masculine person, and I have a lot to say about the discrimination that I face every day as a black trans person. Uh, and them has given me that platform to talk about it out loud. I'm a 19-year-old deaf genderqueer artist currently transitioning on to Sasha. And I write a column about my life titled Man Made. One of my favorite things about working at them is that we're really lucky to produce content um, for queer people by queer people in a really authentic way. We invited this trans activist, Monroe Bergdorf, who's based in the UK. Monroe was talking about how transgender women are actually left out of the conversations about sexual assault. There hasn't really been any mention of the fact that trans women are being killed at a higher rate than ever before. Trans women are not just denied their womanhood by men, they're also denied their womanhood by fellow women and fellow feminists. And until we start to interrogate why they experience so much more violence and so much more danger, we can't really um, move feminism forward until we're including trans women in those conversations. One of my favorite pieces from them um, was about being queer and autistic and how to better make the queer community and queer spaces inclusive of autistic and neurodivergent people. I think the most important piece I wrote was definitely the one I did with my dad. Shortly after telling my dad that I wanted to transition on testosterone and Right before, actually, I got top surgery, I wanted to get on film the moment I asked him to call me his son. I think that the, the beautiful thing about the way that we approach them is that we don't just think about, you know, what stories we are creating online, or we don't just think about what we're doing on Instagram. We're often thinking about what them would look like as a film festival, or what them could look like as a zine, or what them could look like as a t-shirt. You know, so um, while I don't necessarily think that a magazine is my first and foremost priority with what them's future is, I definitely do want there to be something tangible that people can hold and, and cherish for a long time.